Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, in this lesson, I want to uh, just show you how to use two different statements. One is called the break and the other is called continue. Both of these are they're useful for loops. I personally don't use them too often, but uh, they can be useful in certain situations. So in the first situation, I'm gonna show you a break. And I'm not really gonna show you a useful situation for it because it probably requires a little more complex code, but I'm just gonna show you how to use it first. So let's say we have a variable called a, and I'll show you this with a while loop and a for loop. So a is less than five, then I want you to print a and a plus equals one. So we're just gonna add it to a each time, and if I run this, I get zero to four. Now let's say I want when the number gets to two, or for whatever reason, I actually want to break the loop. So let's say if a is equal to two, just type break. So notice my indentation, make sure yours is nice and indented. Uh, we've got this, so what happens is when a is equal to two, when this prints out two, it should break and come down to here and end the loop. So we shouldn't see three and four. So if I run this, I get zero, one, two. Okay, so that's pretty much the break statement. Uh, let's look at another example. Let's say I use a for loop this time. I say for i in range of one to 20. Okay, and let's say I'm gonna do, let's say a print out i, but if i, mod seven is equal to zero, then break. Okay. So in this case, I'm gonna put a little print statement here that separates these. There we go. So that means we'll have uh, some separation between our two loops, so we can actually see what's going on in each one. So in this one, it should always break at two. This one should break when it is divisible by seven. Okay, so if I run this, I have 0, 1, 2, same thing as the first one. And this one says print i when i is divisible by 7. So pretty much the first number that's divisible by 7, or i mod 7, will equal 0. So if 7 can go into the number, then it has 0 remainder. So if it divides evenly, it's a 0 remainder. And that means it'll break. And so, of course, 7 is the first number from 1 to 7, where if you take the mod, you're going to get 0. All right? So that's a pretty pretty simple uh, control statement here. Just uh, just break out of the loop whenever you're you meet the certain condition. So that's actually it, it can be useful for situations where you have a while loop, and this is actually when I see it a lot. Say you have a while loop that is an infinite while loop. Now, why would you want an infinite while loop? Well, you're going to see an example at the end of this section when I do some examples on looping. So hold on to that, you'll see some examples then. And then in the next section when I do functions, we're gonna see more examples of when we might wanna break out of a loop. So if I have a while loop that's infinite, like a game loop, let's say you're playing a video game and the loop's going forever, when you hit a certain button, you want it to leave, right? So you hit escape on your keyboard, then you want the program to stop. So that's the, the breaking out of the loop. That's how you get out of a loop. Uh, usually in a for loop, I don't see it as much in a for loop. You can still use it in a for loop. That's not a problem. But I more often see it in a while loop, especially when the while loop is infinite. If you're doing a for loop, you usually have a good idea of the size of your information and how much you want to go through before you're actually finished. All right, so now let's take a look at the continue statement. I'm going to go ahead and delete. Actually, you know what? I'll just... Uh, I'll leave this here and I'll move this down a little bit. And what I'll do is I'll comment this out. So you see me when I do this, I do this big block of comment. In Sublime, if you hold control and you press the forward slash, the one down right above the control on the right or next to the shift key usually, you can comment a whole block. If you keep it highlighted, you can uncomment it by hitting the same button. So it's kind of a nice little trick. And actually you can see that um, let me see, where's the comments here? Yeah, there we go, comment, toggle comment, so control and the slash. Uh, untoggle comment, untoggle block comment, control shift, and it actually works uh, 
just use the first one. I don't really use the block comments. Okay, so let's uh, run this one now. Let's do continue. So continue works in a similar way, except it doesn't break out of the loop. It just skips everything else in the loop. So let's say I have uh, a for loop in this case. I say in range of 0 to 20. Uh, let's go let's go 1 to 20. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if uh, I mod 3, then continue. Uh, otherwise, I want you to print I. Okay. So what this is going to do is if I modulus, well, sorry, I modulus 3 is equal to 0, then it will continue, meaning this line never actually happens. So only in the cases where I is divisible by 3 will we actually, will we not print. Every other number we should print. So here you should see 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and so on. So if this works, we should. Uh, that's what you should see. So, yep, 1, 2, skips the 3, 4, 5, skips the 6, 7, 8, skips 9, and so on. It'll skip any number divisible by 3. And if I did divisible by 2, you'll see a lot less numbers. It will only show you odd numbers. Okay? And I could say if I... Okay, so if both of these together... Let's see, I equals 0... So if this is true, if, yeah, we can actually do that. If we, if this is true and this is true, then what it will be in here is it will skip and go to the next. So if the number is divisible by two and the number is divisible by three, then it will continue. So if I run this, you get numbers that are divisible by 2 and 3, which means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is divisible by those, 12 is divisible by those. If I change this to OR, you're going to get a lot fewer numbers. So only numbers that are not divisible by 2 and not divisible by 3. So 1, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. And actually, this is, we can get prime numbers this way by expanding this list even further. If I get numbers not divisible by 4 and all sorts of other things, except for the number itself, obviously, because 2 and 3 would both be both be uh, prime numbers. Okay, so anyways, uh, this is the continue statement. It just lets you skip the rest of the loop. No matter how much stuff you have down here, it'll skip, go back to the top, get the next number from the range, and then continue on. Alright, so break. The break statement and the continue statement. The break statement is much more useful in while loops. The continue statement, uh, I'm not sure, I haven't really used the continue statement as much. I can't think of too many instances where I would need to, but you might find it handy at some point. So good to know, but probably not the most useful. All right, I'll see you in the next video.